First of all, we have the Pharisees. Now, during Jesus' day, the Jewish religion, um, of course, had fractured into these four different groups. And in fact, there weren't just four, there were many more. But one of the groups was the Pharisees. This was the largest religious sect of this time within Judaism, led by a relatively small group of religious experts. And they had a tremendously deep respect uh, and focused heavily upon the correct interpretation and the upholding of the Mosaic law to the letter. That was key, to the letter. So the Pharisees were very much about keeping the law to the letter. Um, and in fact, Jesus scolds them for this because they fail to re- understand and comprehend the spirit of the law. Uh, and of course, the spirit that the law was given in. Now, in addition to having strict adherence to the Mosaic law, and in addition to being the largest uh, Jewish sect uh, of this time, They also were very popular within the middle class of society, which there was a tremendous amount. We we would define uh, their middle class economy differently than when we would today, of course. But their, what we would call today a middle class, was very attracted to the Pharisee. Because if they had any connection at all to the Torah, if they had any connection at all to the stories of the past that they had heard about Abraham and uh, Moses and all of these wonderful stories that they had read about and heard about as children. Well, they certainly wanted to have some sort of expression uh, of that spirituality. They wanted to express that religion. And the Pharisees provided that avenue. They were perceived to be experts. Uh, They were extremely respected. Uh, But they were, again, a very highly concentrated group of men who were perceived to be experts and they were highly regarded during, uh, during this time. And so why the popularity? Why were the Pharisees popular to the throngs of people uh, living in this area? Well, predominantly because the Pharisees were bold in their opposition to Hellenism. The Hellenic culture of Greek life intruded upon the Jewish people, and it threatened to destroy their religious traditions and the rule even of law. And so there was a great opposition within the Jewish middle class that felt as if Hellenism and the influence of the Greeks and their new way of life, which was free, by the way, from arduous religious requirements, right? The Greeks did not have to go through different ceremonies. They did not have, in fact, they had a pantheon of gods. And they could worship different gods, and and their gods were much more lenient about different things. And so this was a tremendous invasion, if you will, of of the Jewish culture. And the Jewish culture, of course, still barely struggling to hang on. And therefore, you have people trying to reconnect with their spirituality. And the Pharisees claim to be that door. They claim to be that point of connection for the people. This is why Jesus is run-ins with the Pharisees are so epic. Of course, there were always these ragtag messiahs that would rise up. And the Pharisees, their job was to inspect and uh, embrace or reject. And so the Pharisees considered themselves the gatekeeper. If anyone was going to see the Messiah in this time, it was going to be the Pharisees. The Pharisees were not going to miss the Messiah. They were learned in the letter of the law they knew the prophecies of old, and they were prepared to, to see Messiah and to identify Messiah whenever he arose. And so that is why their rejection in particular of Christ himself in the flesh and their rejection of him, and in fact, their call for his death carries so much weight and makes the story become so much more alive, right? It really does. So, so here we have uh, the Pharisees. They're opposed to this culture of the Greek people who, you remember, uh, the Greek people now were uh, living in an ancient form, in fact, the very original forms of democracy. So uh, Greece was living in a democracy. Greece was a democracy. And we don't have time to go into Greek, but we should do an entire different video on the ancient Greek form of democracy and how that 
those new ideas of of uh, self-rule, right, and the ability to control leaders and the ability to do all of this. This was something that swept into Israel, and Israel was, of course, supposed to be waiting for its Messiah. And so Israel literally just splinters into all of these different groups. Pharisees uh, happens to be one of those groups. So this newfound freedom, so, so-called so freedom that comes into Israel, comes underneath the guise of democracy. Now, of course, Israel is not part, you know, of that wonderful democracy, right? It is simply a subject of the Greek government, and it is also a subject later of the Roman government. And this getting handed off, right, from Babylon, you know, from Egypt, uh, well, in some ways, but it's certainly, uh, you know, Assyria, and the Medes and the Persians, and we just go down the list, uh, Greeks and Romans, and of course, even the Ottoman Empire. We go back and we think all of the different empires who have impacted Israel. It's always been in the way, hasn't it? This area of the Middle East, the Near East, this area has always been in the way of empires as they grow, and so they simply envelop this region. Well, you can imagine there's always going to be... um, blowback to that. There's always going to be blowback when you have that kind of invasion that's going on consistently throughout the centuries. So, of course, we have splintered groups in Israel. Of course, we don't have a great unification in Israel. And so, in fact, the the country is so splintered that whenever Jesus appears, they completely uh, fail to recognize who he really is. But notice, it was not the people who failed to recognize Jesus. It was the Pharisees. The exact opposite happened, right? The actual average person, the person who had a childlike faith, was able to identify Jesus for who he was. They were able to see that there was something very different about Jesus, and they were attracted to him. Whereas the Pharisees, who were learned in the letter of the law, and who knew all of the ancient prophecies, still, when they saw Jesus, only a few of them Only a select few, in fact, could actually bring themselves to understand that they had been wrong in what they had been expecting. 